The bore diameter of a bore well machine is 6 to 8 inches, but the diameter of road and railway tunnels is 15 to 20 meters. And the most challenging work in tunnels is that if the machines move horizontally, the soil or mountain above can collapse. So we need big machines like TBM. The full form of TBM is Tunnel Boring Machine, and it is very powerful, but it is made on demand. Whenever a tunnel is to be made, it is first checked whether the soil or mountain there is strong and the rocks are strong. And then the machine is designed accordingly. This TBM machine that you are seeing breaks the mountains and makes tunnels. Its length is more than 100 meters. And here there are multiple trailing units. All these units are brought on a truck and assembled on site. At the front of the machine is the cutter head, which does fine cutting of stone. You may be surprised to know that the cutter head of the world's largest TBM machine is 20 meters in diameter. The cutter head rotates very slowly in such a way, and a cutting disc is attached to the front side of this head, which looks something like this. This disc is made of high-strength alloy steel, or it can be of tungsten carbide, and the disc rotates freely in its place. When the cutter head rotates applying pressure on the rock, it also starts rotating in its place. Now, in this cutter head, cutting discs are attached according to its diameter. Like, if this is a big size machine, then 42 cutting discs are attached here. But the distance between these discs is very high, so it will be interesting to see how it actually does the cutting. To make it simple, we will take only three discs. The cutter head exerts a tremendous force on these discs. Now, this disc is placed between the rock and cutter head and this disc creates cracks inside the rock by making a line. Now a third disc is placed between the two discs at the back side. Then it will again generate cracks in the rock in between the cracks created by the front disc. Now you know that the stone is not flexible. So the stone on both sides of this disc breaks automatically due to cracks. So actually, TBM does not cut the rock. It creates cracks with high pressure in the rock due to which the stones break automatically. And if you look at the disc placed in the cutter head, then actually their arrangement is like this. Another most important thing is that till the stone is crushed, water is sent to the cutting disc regularly, due to which the disc does not get heated and the life of the disc also increases. Now the biggest challenge here is how to apply force to this cutter head because no normal force is applied here. Up to 20,000 tons of pressure is applied on these cutting discs, which is actually many times more than the weight of this whole machine. And only a hydraulic system can apply this much force. But before that, let me tell you that to rotate the cutter head, there are four radial piston hydraulic motors installed here. Some TBM machines also use electric motors, but here we need high torque, so then a hydraulic motor is placed here, which we can directly connect to the big gear of this head. All these four hydraulic motors are set in parallel connection so that equal force can be applied. If you open this motor and see, its mechanism is very simple. There are a total of five pistons in it, and its rotor is slightly offset from the center. So all these pistons apply forces on this rotor alternately and make it rotate in this manner. Here there are two valves near each piston. When high pressure comes from one valve, the piston will apply force on the rotor and when the piston goes back upwards, this low pressure oil goes out again from this valve. So oil pressure is sent to every piston in this way, but this motor cannot work alone. There is a great technology behind this, which is called control valve, and this valve decides when and how much pressure is to be sent to which piston, and from which piston the oil is to be taken out again. Now, if we look at this motor, it is complex, but it has unlimited power. So that's why the radial piston motor is used here. The waste that comes out after cutting the rock. There is a drain system here. If the machine is moving in vertical direction, then due to gravity, this crashed rock automatically goes out along with the water. And if the machine is running in a direct horizontal position, then there is a conveyor and belt system here, which keeps taking this waste out and a truck is standing at the exit of the machine, which collects this waste and takes it out. Now the most important section comes that how the force is applied to the machine and how it is held at one place. So behind the cutter head, there are hydraulic jacks, which apply a force of 20,000 tons on this cutter head. 
but I've just told you that this force is many times more than the weight of this whole machine, due to which Newton's third law of motion works very well here. Which tells us that whatever force you apply on the cutter head, the same force will be applied back on you in the opposite direction. So these hydraulic jacks have a lot of power, but this machine can also go backwards instead of going forward. So supporting grippers are installed just behind the cutter head. So first of all, tremendous force is applied on the gripper side, due to which the machine is held at one place. After that, the hydraulic pump starts applying force on the cutter head, and cutting starts. The piston of these hydraulic jacks is about 1.2 meters long. So after running for about 30 minutes, these hydraulic pistons extend to their maximum strength, and drilling is stopped. Now to retract these hydraulic jacks, the whole machine from behind has to be pulled forward, and if the machine is in this vertical position, and if you retract the supporting gripper, then the whole machine will move backwards due to gravity and can cause havoc. Then behind these grippers, there is a full back prevention system on a trailing unit. And for safety, hydraulic grippers are fitted on the front and rear side. The gripper fitted on the rear side can move in this trailing unit in such a way with the help of hydraulic pistons. But these grippers have a self-inhibitory mechanism due to which if they slip, then they automatically tighten back, and in that case, if all the hydraulics fail, then there is a safety tank fitted at the back, which is filled with highly compressed nitrogen. In case of failure, it will immediately tighten these grippers. When the hydraulic pump reaches its maximum extension, the front gripper is retracted first, and the hydraulic pump mounted here pulls the entire machine forward. After this, the front gripper is retightened and the back gripper is moved forward and tightened too. When all this is done, then the main side gripper is released and this unit is moved forward. After moving forward, the grippers apply force on both sides and start further drilling. But a problem arises here again. I just told you that the head of TBM can be of 20 meter diameter. So let us assume that there is some rock on the upper side which is very weak, and some strong rock is on the lower side. So here already a lot of force is being applied on the cutter head. So there are high chances that the cutter head can become unbalanced. So here, balancing hydraulic jacks are installed, which work to balance the force exerted on the entire cutter head by adjusting it in this manner. Now if you look inside the machine, there are some heavy pipes through which fresh water and air supply is taken to the front of the machine. When the machine runs, a lot of dust starts flying, so this dust is controlled with water. Along with this, regular supply of fresh air is done, so that the workers can get oxygen, and force can be applied on the front side of the tunnel, with the pressure of air. So there are many trailing units attached to its backside. A drilling rig is attached to this trailing unit, which works exactly like a borewell machine. We will understand its use later. Air compressor pumps are installed in the front unit. Oil tank and oil pump are attached to the next trailing unit. And in the last, at the back, the entire electronic mechanism of the machine is there, and its control center is also there. From the control center, when the cutter head will rotate, and when the machine will move forward, all this is controlled. There are supporting wheels at the bottom of the machine, with which it moves forward. But this machine also forms a track at the back, because regular technical equipment is required here. So using these tracks, goods can be brought in any trolley. And whatever technical equipment comes here, a small ropeway system is installed here to take them in front of the machine. So this is how a TBM machine works, but when the tunnel is actually drilled, it faces a lot of challenges. And how does this machine handle those challenges? And in what way is a tunnel bored? So whatever is the remaining part of this video, we will explain it in detail in the next video. Till then you can understand the working of a Borewell machine with the help of this video. I do hope you liked the video. Thank you so much for watching.